welcome and thank you for coming this morning. So we've seen that Avidi is, is the most powerful, it's the highest throughput, it's the most accurate, most cost-effective, most flexible desktop sequencer on the market. And today I'm going to talk to you about Avidi OS, which is the software that powers the Avidi. And it's one of the reasons why it's so easy to use. I'm also going to give you a preview of what's coming with uh, Avidi OS 2.0, which will be launching with CloudBreak. Um, Matt will be speaking about CloudBreak at the Bronze Sponsor Workshops later this afternoon. I'll also give you a, a sneak peek at the upcoming Allen Bio Cloud platform, uh, talk to you a little bit about why it's important, what it enables, and how it integrates with our systems. So first, a peek under the hood. A VDOS is made up of 15 microservices, uh, which run on top of Ubuntu Core, which is a specialized operating system for embedded systems. And so uh, it's, a, it's very secure. Each of the microservices runs in, in what's called a SNAP, which is a sandboxed environment and uh, with very uh, strict control. So you can't run any unauthorized uh, scripts or executables. It, it's very secure. We also have an onboard FPGA that does primary analysis. And so this is a, a low power, uh, very fast, compact compute that uh, it really is the only way we can keep up with the tremendous data rates that our instrument produces. So a VDOS was designed from the ground up to be uh, as simple and intuitive and, and delightful as, uh, as possible. Uh, our designers worked very hard to make sure that every interaction is purposeful. We've also gotten feedback. Maybe some of you are, are early users uh, with 1.0, and we've incorporated that feedback, improved the look and feel, and also updated the workflow. So let me walk you through that a little bit. And we have these instruments uh, here, uh, so I, I welcome you to use them uh, after the talk. But uh, so this is a new screen to tell you how you prepare your reagents before you load them. Uh, look, one of the differences now is that you load reagents before you set up your run information. This is because we have now different types of kits. We have different chemistry versions. We want to make sure that the information you put in your run uh, matches the, the reagents you've loaded into the system. Uh, you empty your waste. You, you go through the priming of the fluidics. And then, of course, you load your flow cell. Here you unclamp the flow cell. You load uh, the old flow cell. You load a new flow cell. Uh, the barcode is scanned, it's, it's verified against the reagents you've, you've already loaded, and you get to the run summary screen where you get to review all the information before you start your run. So it's, it's very simple. And recall that the Avidi is actually two instruments in one. So uh, each side operates effectively independently. Uh, you can set up one side or the other or both uh, at the same time. And then if one side finishes before the other, you can start a new run on that side uh, at, at, while the other one is still running. Uh, let me walk you through that, which is a feature we call Flex Start. So here, side A is running. We've requested a, a, a new run on side B. You, you wait for side A to get to a safe state to pause, and then it brings you into the workflow. Uh, we've already walked through the workflow, so we'll just skip through this. Uh, you'll get to the, to the run summary screen. And then when you start your run, side A is automatically resumed and side B starts running. Again, very simple. So one of the, the guiding principles of Element is that the data is your own. So with the Avidi systems, you get to push the data, stream it directly to where you want. Uh, so currently with Avidi, we support you streaming your data to your own AWS buckets to GCP buckets or to local storage. And as we get more customer feedback, we'll enable uh, uh, different cloud providers. Once the uh, connections are configured, you can uh, use those in any new run that you set up. And of course, the, the beauty of, of streaming your data off the instrument over the course of the run is that when the run is complete, then your data are already there where, where they need to be. And you can use the advantages of the cloud, the elasticity of the cloud, to run all of your uh, samples in parallel. And so you get a faster uh, turnaround time, faster uh, time to answer than you would if you were trying to do all of that uh, analysis on the instrument and uh, you're limited by the compute on the instrument and then having to get all that data off. So as I mentioned, we have an FPGA on the system. 
and the primary analysis is, is done there. Uh, what that enables is that you have a real-time QC available on the instrument. So with a VDOS of 1.0, we had a percent Q30 and PHIX error rate displayed. Uh, with a VDOS 2, we'll be introducing uh, many new metrics. Starting with 2.0, we'll uh, be introducing indexing assignment uh, statistics. I'll talk about those next. Uh, and then didn't quite make it into 2.0. That's in validation right now. Uh, we're going to be adding a bunch of new features and new metrics in 2.1, including percent Q40, uh, average Q score, um, the base composition, and, and the thumbnail view. So one of the really exciting new features in uh, Avidio S2.0 is this ability to do onboard uh, demultiplexing. Again, demultiplexing is uh, the association of which data go with which samples. And so as a result, you get uh, indexing statistics. Uh, on the instrument, you'll get overall uh, summary statistics, and I'll talk a little bit about what's available now in BioCloud next. Um, but also with CloudBreak, and this is, this is really <laughs> very exciting, uh, in my opinion, is that we're, we're moving the index reads to come first. So you'll get uh, these data very early in your, um, in your run. Uh, if there's any sort of manifest issues, you'll be identifying those. Uh, those can be corrected after the fact, but if there's a, a library issue, then you can stop the run and, and save um, valuable sequencing time. Another new feature in a VDOS uh, 2.0 is the ability to get new versions. Uh, you're notified when new versions are available and you can choose to, uh, to update uh, when you want. So these updates are not just for the front-end user interface, but also for the back-end microservices, the firmware, and even the FPGA can be reflashed. So today I'm happy to be introducing you to uh, the LMBio Cloud Platform, which is a centralized portal for our customers to interact with their AVDs. You can uh, do instrument configuration, user management, run configuration, uh, run monitoring, and, uh, and also uh, manage analysis flows, which I'll be talking about. Oh, and of course, uh, it's optimized for both desktop and, and mobile use. So uh, instruments, um, a, as I mentioned, each instrument can be configured to have a, a data storage connection uh, to stream their data to. Um, but of course, if you have multiple instruments, you don't want to do that on every instrument. And so uh, LMBio Cloud will, will give you a centralized portal for configuring the storage connections of all your instruments in a single place. And it's very easy to uh, add storage connections. Um, and we will also, and you'll see this as a common design element throughout LMBio Cloud, is that we have detailed instructions on screen uh, on the right-hand side. The other thing that's really nice about LMBio Cloud is that now you don't have to set up your your run information on the instrument itself. You, you can do that at, at, at your desk, set up your run, and then they'll be available when you get to your instrument and all you have to do is select it and go. So as, as I mentioned, uh, with a BDOS 2, we're gonna have a, a bunch of primary analysis metrics, which is, is great, of course, but then you have to be right in front of the instrument to see them. So with LMBio Cloud, you don't have to do that. You can view these data remotely. Uh, you can look at all of your runs across your entire fleet of instruments. Um, and for active runs, you'll, you'll get uh, real-time live updating as the data is being processed on the instrument. Uh, and because this is a, a now a, a desktop web interface, you can, uh, you can benefit from the richer interface available. You can dig deeper into the types of analysis metrics. Uh, in particular, for example, the indexing assignment that I talked about. Um, on instrument, you just get aggregate statistics, where here you can dig into the individual metrics for each sample and see which ones are under or overrepresented. And then as, as I mentioned, uh, you know, one of the themes is that the data is your own. And so this goes not just to the, to the storage, but also to the compute. So rather than you pushing your data to our platform and, and us processing it there, the data is your own. And so uh, we, we orchestrate the, the data, the compute in your account on your behalf. And so we use the concept of federated compute 
One of our early partners in this effort is uh, AWS and their new uh, omics uh, managed service, which is a, a fully managed service that's specific to genomics. It was recently launched and they've been great partners. Once you have uh, these compute connections uh, configured, you then can uh, define what we call analysis flows, and uh, they can do um, all the subsequent analysis that you require. Setting up the compute connections is also relatively straightforward. And again, we provide detailed instructions on the, on the screen. Uh, as I mentioned, AWS Omics will be our first compute uh, connection partner, but we're working uh, with others as well. And one of the important ones is NextFlow Tower. And that's really nice because it's cloud agnostic. So once a compute connection is set up, you can use it to configure what we call analysis flows. Our first analysis flow obviously will be basis to fast queue. So here I can walk you through how you would set that up with AWS. So you set up a, a basis to fast queue analysis flow. You would choose uh, the AWS compute connection uh, that will bring up uh, the compute connection specific parameters that you need to enter for that analysis flow. Again, all of the instructions are, are visible on the right hand side of the screen. Then when all your data are ready, uh, basis to fast queue will th this analysis flow will automatically launch. And, uh, and if you've configured it, to allow ECP to access the summary statistics for your run, then you can view those statistics uh, right in the ECP portal. Another really nice feature is that uh, your information from your partner console is just one click away. So, so in this example, showing the AWS management console, which is where you can view uh, logs and other data that are associated uh, with that specific execution. Again, this is in your own AWS account, but the convenience is that you just have a single click and, and you can access all of that information. So, uh, Allen Bio Cloud is entering beta this month and uh, it'll be generally available in Q2. Being a, a cloud platform, of course, it's, it's always continuously improving. Some of the things that we will be adding uh, in the near future are LM Bio Cloud APIs for developers to interact with the, the system directly and the associated developers portal. We're gonna be also launching a command line interface for bio, bioinformaticians to, uh, to use the system. Uh, we will also be expanding our fleet management capabilities, including the ability to uh, roll out new versions of a VDOS across your fleet. And then as always, we're listening to our customers. We're listening to feature requests uh, coming back from beta or from the field, and we'll be incorporating those in, uh, in future versions. So with that, I'm happy to, uh, to take any questions uh, before I turn it over to uh, Mike, Matt, and Sean. Yes. The sort of instrument management performance metrics that are generated by the page that break that you can dive deep. What about just retaining metrics sort of for trending over time? Is that something that is? Yes, yes, I, I didn't show that, but we do have all of the historical runs as well, and those can be trended over time. And uh, a way to like retain that web information in a CSV or something like that, so that if there are only a few metrics you want to keep over time. Oh, I see. Well, so the developers portal um, and, and the API and the command line interface will allow you to extract whatever data you want. So, so the data is, is stored uh, in, in a database and then you can always pull whatever information you want from across historical runs. Any other questions? So how do you manage yes. user, and, I mean, user management per se? Is it like the land login that would be used or? Yeah, for, for user management, um, and, and I didn't show that either, but we, uh, we do have a uh, single sign-on uh, enabled. So you can, uh, you can configure your, uh, your IT to use single sign-on. You can always use also, but not recommended, um, direct um, uh, user password, username password uh, authentication. Um, and, uh, and we use uh, Auth0, which is a third-party authentication provider. Yeah. 